In this video, we are using the modulation distortion application in the Keysight PNAX network analyzer to study the noise power ratio of an amplifier. The traditional NPR measurement uses a noise-like wideband signal called the pedestal. In one section, the energy is taken out to form a notch. For the traditional NPR measurement, as it would be made with a spectrum analyzer, this notch is needed so we can see how much intermodulation distortion is introduced by the device under test. The NPR is the ratio of the power in the notch to the power in the noise pedestal. In this view, the yellow trace shows the input signal to the device under test, and the blue trace shows the signal coming out. Going in, the signal has a fairly deep notch, but at the output, we see that intermodulation products from nonlinear distortion have put power back in the notch. Measuring this ratio at the output gives a good measure of the nonlinear distortion of the device under test. One difficulty with this measurement has been isolating the contribution of the device under test from the distortion already present in the wideband source. The Keysight Modulation Distortion application uses spectral correlation methods to isolate the distortion created by the device under test. This method creates a new trace called the distortion trace, shown here in pink. This trace measures only intermodulation distortion products. Because we're making this measurement with a network analyzer, we can measure the signal at the input and the output of the device under test at the same time. This allows us to remove any distortion contribution of the input signal and measure the NPR as if the notch were arbitrarily deep. By removing the NPR contribution of the source, we now have an isolated measurement of the device. You can see that this distortion trace lines up very well with the notch floor and also with ACPR levels outside the channel. Because we now have this distortion trace, we can do away with the notch altogether and stimulate the entire frequency range of the device under test. On the top of the screen you can see such a test, measuring NPR using the distortion trace. This is a more representative measurement of the device under test, where the energy in any given area can itself contribute to the distortion overall. But we don't have to stop there. The spectral correlation method gives us new freedom to choose a test stimulus that mirrors the real-world signals which will be passing through the device under test. For example, here we are using a 64 qualm signal as a test stimulus to simulate the distortion we would see on a single carrier link. Using the distortion trace, we can calculate NPR for this signal. Because the 64 qualm signal has a much lower crest factor than the flat noise pedestal, the measured NPR is much lower, even for the same average power level. Now we can see a more accurate measure of the distortion level as it would be during operation. This can be applied to any repeating signal and used to measure how the amplifier would react to different modulation schemes. For more information on the new modulation distortion application, visit keysight.com or click on the link shown in the description.